4. Orchestra, be fast, please. Page 4. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be season refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers, there shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys, sound of, of abundance of rain. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come, and now honor thy word. There shall be showers of blessing, O oh, that today they might fall. Now, as to God, we are confessing. Now, as on Jesus we call, there shall be showers of blessing. If we bear trust and obey, shall be season refreshing. If we let God have his way, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. <laughs>
asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of Zechariah. The Book of Zechariah. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, what is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, This is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of the lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I up mine eyes and looked. And behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Chapter 6 and I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot black horses, and in the third chariot white horses, and in the fourth chariot grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them, and the grizzled go forth toward the south country. And the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth, so they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldai, of Tobijah, and of Jediah, which are come from Babylon. And come thou the same day, and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah, then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the counsel of peace shall be between them both. And the crowns shall be to Helam, and to Tobijah, and to Jediah, and to Hen, the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord, 
and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Chapter 7. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chislu, when they had sent unto the house of God Sherezer and Regamelech and their men to pray before the Lord and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and the cities thereof round about her when men inhabited the south and the plain? And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother and oppress not the widow nor the fatherless the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken, and pulled away the shoulder, and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it is come to pass, that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray.
Praise the Lord. At the Mawa State, I said, Praise the Lord. Tonight, I bring the power that never fails to every one of you. Everyone here at the Alpha location, everyone online, whatever the challenge, Whatever the problem, whatever you're asking for, whatever miracle you want to catch tonight, where are you? The power 
that never fails. It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that Christ, his blood, his sacrifice at Calvary brings the power that sets everyone free. And Lord, we pray tonight, you open the heavens upon your people. And that power, the power of Christ, that power, the power of his death and burial and resurrection will walk in every life. Save souls tonight. Deliver the oppressed tonight. Heal the sick tonight. Miracle signs and wonders everywhere tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we begin, the GCK for November. Here at the Alpha location and going throughout the world, I want to tell you, miracles will happen in your life. In your family everywhere around you in Jesus name tonight as we start I'm talking to you on the wonder walking power of the unfailing God look at that we're talking about God a God that cannot fail a God was the power a God with a promise, a God with a performance that cannot fail. And you are here tonight and you are connected with that God. He has the power, the power he has in creation. is having that same power in redemption and is having that power here at our Alpha location and there everywhere as you connect to the power tonight wonders will happen in your life okay i said wonders will happen in your life the wonder walking power of the unfailing god three things we're looking at in the message tonight number one the unlimited power of a great god a great god and his power is unlimited. Number two, the unwavering promise of a gracious God. He gives us promises. And those promises are unwavering. No storm can change them. No power can alter them. Number two, therefore, is the unwavering promise of a gracious God. Number three, the undeniable performance. It will perform something in your life tonight. There where you are, there where you are, there where you are, the performance of the promise of God, whatever he has promised, and the promises of God cover all areas of your life. The undeniable performance of a glorious God. Look at number one there. Number one is the unlimited power of our great God. As we look at Jeremiah chapter 32, it's in verse 17, Jeremiah chapter 32. And I'm reading here from verse 17. It says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the earth, the heaven, and the earth by thy great power. It's saying, Jeremiah the prophet, Jeremiah, the one that God sent to speak to the nations and to speak to you and to speak to me. He says that God, the God will serve and the God who is ever the same yesterday, today and forever. And he says, I am God, I change not that God. He created the heavens, the stars, the planets and the earth, think about it, God, mighty enough, great enough, powerful enough to create everything you can see and everything you cannot see except you use a telescope. He, with the great power, created everything, the seas and the oceans and the earth and everywhere. And now the conclusion is, 
and there is nothing too hard for thee. I want to announce to you tonight that any challenge you have, you bring to the Lord, is as easy with God as pronouncing A, B, C, because there is nothing too hard for Him. In your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in every part, every area of your life, nothing too hard for him. I want you to begin to think about the problem you have, the challenge you have, and the guilt you have, and the condemnation you have, and the salvation, the redemption you're looking for. Everything tonight will be done. Because there is nothing too hard for him look at verse 27 there verse 27 behold i am the lord now jeremiah had spoken god himself now is speaking and he's saying i am the lord the god of all flesh he says i am he was, he is, and he will ever be. And whatever he did in the past, is going to do today. Everything you have heard, all the testimonies you have heard, even the ones you have not are so spectacular that you have not heard, the Lord says, I am the one that did that in the past. And the one that is doing that today, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me what's your answer to that anything in your life too hard for him anything for your salvation too hard for him anything for your healing anything for your deliverance anything wonder of wonders that he wants to do in your life he said is there anything too hard for me what's your answer the Lord is going to work that miracle in your life tonight. Number one, he will save you. He'll forgive your sin. He'll change your life. That bad habit. He'll break that bad habit in your life. That thing you have been struggling with. I don't know how to overcome this. How to overcome that. Tonight, the night of the overcomer will come upon your life. Because there is nothing, nothing, nothing to hard for him look at verse 38 there in verse 38 he said and they shall be my people and i will be their god look at the promise of god tonight he said no matter who you are you say i'm a sinner that's right i'm a terrible sinner that's all right but he says i will be their god you're a sinner he is holy and yet it's going to forgive you and when he forgives you he'll set you free and he'll say now you are mine number one you are his by creation because he created you and he is your god and he says i will be their god number two by redemption by creation he is your god by redemption he is your god and he says I will be their God and they shall be my people. Anyone going to belong to God here today? By creation, by redemption, as you call upon the Lord, He'll forgive your sin. He'll change your life. He'll do the wonder, wonder of wonders in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I need a damn stage. Amen. Job chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 10. Job chapter 9, reading from verse 10. He's telling us about the wonder working power of God. He's telling us about the innumerable, the uncountable wonders that God will do. He'll do it for you, they'll do it for you, they'll do it for everyone. And we'll begin to count one, two, three. We lose count because the God that we're talking about tonight is the God of all wonders and the wonders that he performs. They are innumerable, without number, without counting. Look at that, Job chapter 9, verse 10. Which doeth great things, past finding out, yea, wonders without number. 
wonders without number. If let's say, for example, you have a uh, hundred thousand people, the wonders of God it go beyond a hundred thousand. Let's say you have a million people, the wonders of God they go beyond one million. Actually, the people on earth they are counted. They can be counted one, two, three, one billion, two billion, three billion, eight billion now, and yet the miracles of God and the wonders of God they go beyond the age billion and everyone has his own you have the miracle waiting for you here tonight power waiting for you here tonight and the power that never fails going to get hold of you and there's going to be a miracle for you What's the person I'm talking about there? Miracle coming your way because it does wonders without number. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, Lo, he goes by me, and I see him not. You'll not see him with your physical, natural eyes, but he's going by you, and he's going to get to everyone. You need salvation, he says, here I am, I am your savior. You need deliverance, he says, here I am, I am your deliverer. And you need reconciliation with God, he says, here I am, I'm the day's man that will reconcile you unto God. Lo, he goes by me, and I see him not, he passes on also, but I perceive him not. Even if you don't feel anything, even if you don't see anything, our God is everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent and he's omniscient. He knows everything concerning you. And he's going to solve your problem. So don't wait for, I don't feel, look at that. He goes by me and I see him not. I don't see I don't hear a voice from the sky. It says, it passes on also, and I perceive him not. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, behold, he taketh away, and who can hinder him? He comes to you, and he takes your sickness away. And what demon, what spirit, what Satan can hinder him? He comes and he takes, he breaks the yoke in your life. And it takes the yoke away. And it takes your weakness away. Your feebleness. It takes that away. And who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, What doest thou? He saves the worst of sinners. And he saves the one that somebody thinks that one cannot be saved. How do you know? Everyone calling upon the name of the Lord tonight will be saved in Jesus' name. That's why it says he does what he wants to do. He accomplishes what he wants to accomplish. And no one, no power from anywhere can hinder him. Tonight is your night. And tonight is the night of your salvation. Say amen. amen. Of your healing, another amen. amen. And of wonders in your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 38. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. We're looking at verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Have you noticed there the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit working together with power, unlimited power, great power, a power that saves the power that heals, the power that delivers. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth for one purpose. And he says, with the Holy Ghost, then with power. What's the purpose? He went about doing good. It's coming to do good in your life tonight. As you give yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I believe that you died for me. I believe that your death 
was to set me free. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I believe that tonight I am going to call upon you, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe tonight it will do good in your life. It will do good in my life. Is I said he'll do good in my life. Whoever you are there tonight, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, you're young, you are old, Christ is here and he wants to do good in your life. And then you said, I'm healing all, and healing all, and healing all. Is he going to heal you tonight? And healing all. What does that mean? The blind, the deaf, the dumb, the lame. The one that has arthritis, the one who is maimed, the one that has one part of the body, not there again, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. For God, the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, was with him. And is still that today, the God that says, I am God. I change not. It's there tonight. And as we link up with him through the Lord Jesus Christ, he will set us free. Everyone in Jesus' name. Did you notice that word I use as we link up with him? How do we link up with him? The, uh, let's say, for example, there is a town here. And that town has everything you want everything you desire everything you want to have the only challenge is where you are you are in another town another village another city and there's a river in between where you are and where he where the other town is and you say i desire you say, I want. You say, I pray. You say, I'm longing. You say, I, I really want to have. The only challenge is, although we have everything you need in that other town, where you are is caught off by a river. And the river is wide. And the river is deep. And there's no way for you to cross over. Then... A bridge is con constructed, solid, wide, that will take any wedge, any vehicle, any lorry, and any pedestrian. And so now there is a link. You can cross from where you are to that town. And when you get there, everything you need is now available. God has everything you need. What you need here on earth. What you need when we get to heaven. On the other side. But there is a gulf between a sinful man and a holy God. How are we going to get what we need? Although God is there and he has everything. And he's willing to give you everything. But you need to cross over and get to him. And there's a big gulf. chasm. A deep, deep ditch that you could not cross over. And then Jesus Christ, holy, because he also is God. And then he holds the hand of God and he became man, the son of man. He came to take all our sins away. He holds your hand. And then he being the bridge between God and man, the mediator, the Messiah, the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that links you up and that connects you with God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth like he anointed no angel, like he anointed no other man. He anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, like he anointed no other personality on earth because he is the only bridge and the link, the connection between man and God. He went about doing good and healing all.
all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him that's why tonight unlimited power will work in your life it will work in my life what you say is what you get it will work in my life it will work in your life in Jesus name let's look at number two here number two the unwavering promise of our gracious God unwavering promise of our gracious God what that means is is giving us a promise and he is a God that will not lie everything he has said that's exactly what he will do he said come call upon me turn away from your sin and turn to me all the ends of the earth and be ye saved when we come to him everyone that comes to him get saved look at the word of god you want to notice here that god cannot lie god will not lie he's giving us a promise in christ and every promise he gave us in christ is going to fulfill in hebrews chapter 6 verse 17 it says wherein god will he more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath and then in verse 18 in verse 18 that by two immutable things unchangeable things in the which it was impossible for god to lie impossible for god to lie the challenge with us is you have never met anybody that has not told a lie even once in life and then when you come to god many people they look at god as say god is one of these people that will meet and at least once to somebody he may not tell a lie to thousands of people but the man will tell a lie to one person out of a thousand and so when we come to god we don't understand that of a million people God will not tell a lie to anyone of a billion people God will not tell a lie to anyone because it's impossible for God to lie then he says we that we might have a strong consolation that's why we have great faith in God and strong confidence in God because as he promised that he will forgive he will not lie he will forgive you tonight as he promised he'll set free he'll not lie he'll set you free tonight I was waiting for an amen from Madame Marstich. And as he promised that he's going to bless you and heal you and deliver you tonight, he will do that in Jesus' name. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. We flee to God. We run to God. And when I say you're giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you say we flee to God, it means immediately you say, yes, I am here. I belong to Jesus now. I leave the ways of darkness. I leave all my sins behind. I want Jesus. If necessary, you raise up your two hands and say, yes, I come to Christ. And whoso Ever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank God tonight is the night of your salvation. Tonight is the night of your deliverance. And tonight is the night of your miracle in Jesus' name. Look at Titus there. Titus chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 2. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 in hope of eternal life in hope of eternal life in hope of eternal life which god that cannot lie that cannot lie promised before the world began god that cannot lie has promised us eternal life what's eternal life eternal life 
the life that never ends what's eternal life eternal life the very life of god when you are born by a father you have the life of that father i'm showing you students who have studied biology when a man and a woman when they come together as husband and wife and then a child is born you have the life of the father and the mother go ahead one step ahead of that doctors will tell you if the father the mother has a peculiar disease in the genes or let me not use big word chromosome if the father the mother has that the child can only have the life of the father now god the father he has life everlasting life eternal life peaceful life happy life joyful life with no hindrance and no problem at all and he says now i want to give birth to you your daddy your mommy give birth to you no matter how old you are you're 90 you're 100 you had a daddy you had a mommy they give birth to you and you have the life of man that life is limited life that life is short life that life will end a few years but now the almighty god he says come i want to give you my life the very life of god and the only thing you can do is to listen to him and give him your heart your life in hope of eternal life which god that cannot lie promised before the world began before the world began he promised that life and today happens to be your day of having that eternal life am i talking to somebody there life of god the life that knows no regret the life that knows no sorrow and the life that knows no suffering and the life that does not end here the life that continues and continues and continues forever and ever that god that does not lie has promised that unto you i will have i said i will have you will have in jesus name how do I have that? How do you have that? I say, chapter 55, and I'm reading from verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. How? Somebody came to town. And he came to the city square. And he announced and he said, Now, all the young people that are here in their city, I'm going to give them scholarship and they will have that scholarship anywhere you want to study to to any grade i'm here now i'm not living here i'm not staying here i'm not dwelling here but i came to the city square at this time and i'm going to offer the scholarship to everyone that comes and then information is going everywhere i'm going i am going and somebody says i'm resting now i'm sleeping now i can't go now i will go another time see the man is not living in your town here and he says now is the time you can have that scholarship even if you are tired you will get up i'm talking about somebody there and then you'll go to that city square you'll say i'm here he says have your own have your own have your own god says i'm here now life is not forever here on earth but at this time now he comes to our city square so to say and he says whoever comes i'm going to bless him seek ye the lord while he may be found you don't know what will happen tomorrow you don't know where you'll be tomorrow at this time 
when the time of opportunity is there and when the free gift of God and the grace of God in salvation is available seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says let the wicked forsake his way you want to come to a new way the way of success is coming to you today the way of new life is coming to you today let the wicked forsake his way you know somebody says preacher i don't understand that i'll explain to you uh, you didn't have money to buy good food so you go to the garbage uh, can where they put uh, you know those uh, remnants and all that there are germs there ants there everything there but what could you do because you didn't have the money to buy good food Food and uh, you, so you pick up uh, things and then somebody says that will give you disease that will kill you that will destroy your life and he says forsake your way of going to that garbage can and then come over here and I'll feed you to satisfaction that's what he's saying let the wicked forsake his way all those ways you have been going and the things you are picking up they'll destroy your life and damage your life and here is God bringing life Life unto you, bringing health unto you, bringing salvation to you, and bringing good, good things to you. It says, forsake the old, because the new is here. Forsake what will destroy you. Forsake what will defile you. Let the uh, wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man is thus, and let him return unto the Lord. Let him return unto the Lord preacher what does that mean we came from God we strayed away from God we came from God he made us let's return to our roots let's return to our creator all this suffering that we have and we're suffering as if we're spiritual orphans we don't have God he doesn't have us we don't have life and we don't have eternal life joy happiness we don't have let's return to the one that made us he's looking at us why are we suffering like this why are we sick like this why are we sinful like this it says return he's waiting to do you good it will do good in your life today tonight is that night it will reverse every negative thing in your life tonight in jesus name let him return look at that word let him return don't wait for another person let him return let her return it's a personal choice it's a personal decision and you are saying I've heard his voice. Maybe the person by your side makes himself deaf that he's not hearing. He's hearing, but he's not perceiving. He's seeing, he doesn't understand. But you have heard and you have understood. You have understood that God is calling you. He's calling you to a peaceful life. He's calling you to a life, a, a, a life that's exciting to live. And he says, let him as an individual return. And he, God, will have mercy upon him. Mercy for you tonight grace for you tonight salvation for you tonight the lord is about to do something good something great unforgettable in your life tonight let him return unto our god for he will abundantly pardon somebody will say amen yeah. the lord will perform that in our lives number three now number three is the undeniable performance of our great glorious God the unforgettable and the undeniable performance of our glorious God many other people have come they have touched the Lord they have linked up with the Lord and they have got wonders miracles now it's your turn who will be the next to touch the lord 
and to receive salvation, healing, deliverance from the Lord. I said, who will be the next? Hey, let me show you some. Just two tonight. I'll tell you more later. Tonight, let me tell you about one. Would I say lady, woman? A lady, Rebecca. How she came at her own time of opportunity. And she got a miracle. Like you are going to get your miracle tonight. I could tell you the story, but no, I'll let Rebecca herself talk to you. Thank you, sister. Talk to us about what God did with your chronic kidney disease. Let's listen to her. My name is Rebecca Dunero. I'm 10 years old of, of kidney problem. So I say that I don't have any hope again. That my kidney is shrinking. That you can't extract the um, products again. My name is Happiness Inc. This is my daughter. In fact, what I experienced in my body, in the hospital, we saw we got the pregnant seed that it couldn't be very well so that you are oxygen. I heard about the GCK at uh, Portacourt and I went with faith that God will heal me. I believed God. And when I got there, with all the prayers from our daddy, God has healed me because since my body stopped swelling, my breath is now normal. Everything has come back to normal. I thank God for what He has done for me, for restoring my health and making it permanent. And I thank our pastor for keeping this program. And I pray that God will continue to bless him and uh, bless his ministry. Amen. I thank God for GCK program and I pray that it will continue. Praise the Lord. I thought you were clap so that the next testimony will be coming from you. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to introduce a couple to you, Mr. Jethro and his wife. The story will be switched in their mouth, so let them tell you the story themselves, what God did for them, and then you can begin to think what God will do for you tonight. Some miracles are difficult to believe, but I'm a living testimony that miracles do occur. I am Jeff Proshikman. I got married to my wife in the year 2020. And after some months, my wife took in, but only to experience miscarriage. We went to a private hospital, a mission hospital, only to be told by the doctor that my wife has multiple uh, fibroids. Fibroid is a common gynecological condition in our environment. And to have multiple fibroids in a woman is a, is a heavy body. It's a cause of infertility, heavy flow, and some other complications. And so to be cured of multiple fibroids in a, in a, in a way like this is, is divine. And to also have a baby, have a cure, then it's something beyond medical explanation. They diagnosed me of multiple fibroids. So as we are looking at trusting God, it happened during the wine solution crusade, Abuja crusade, last year, September. Our mommy in the Lord, Mommy Esther Kumuyi, came on board to address and read the congregation. She lifted up her prayer request and challenged us, have you written yours? I took it upon myself, write down my own. The first thing that I wrote was, God, I need your grace. Number two was, God, I want this womb to be fruitful and give birth to a living being that will live his or her life to serve you. And lo and behold, during that time, I was having on the 29th of September that last year, having serious abdominal pain, cramping, as if I would see my monthly flow. But my prayer was, God, I want you to challenge my challenge, and the Lord challenged my challenge. I took in 
and then I gave birth to this baby. No idea of that in the Lord during the last day of that crusade. He said, I'm happy for you people because the Lord has answered your prayer. You will begin to take it one by one. Now I have taken my own. The Lord is good, He has done it for me. Amen. One by one. See it now. One by one. You'll pick your own tonight. Number three is the undeniable performance of our glorious God. Jeremiah chapter 33. In Jeremiah chapter 33, we're looking at verse 3. It says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Have you noticed the two parts to that sentence? And there's nothing in between. Number one, call unto me. Number two, and I will answer. He will answer you tonight. Nothing between you and your miracle tonight. Nothing between you and your salvation tonight. Nothing between you and the wonders of wonders in your life tonight. In Jesus' name, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. What you have never seen, you'll see tonight. The peace of God will come to your heart. And the joy of salvation will come to you tonight. And the miracle of healing, the miracle of deliverance, everything will happen in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6 there. In verse 6 it says, Behold, I will bring each health and kill and I will kill them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 14. The first part of verse 14. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised. The day has come. Your day has come. My day has come. That God will perform that good thing that he has promised. He promised salvation. The day has come. He promised healing. The day has come. He promised the joy of salvation. The day has come. He promised redemption, forgiveness. The day has come for you. I said for you. Where is she? Where is she there? Salvation day has now come. Healing day has now come. Deliverance day has now come. Anyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Anyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be healed. Anyone calling upon the name of the Lord, the God that cannot fail, or the power that cannot fail, wonders will happen in your life tonight in Jesus' name. He'll forgive your sin, he'll save your soul, he'll heal your body, he'll perform the miracle in your life. Our time has now come, ex bowed and eyes closed. Ex bowed and eyes closed. He's telling us we can call on him and we can ask of him the forgiveness, the salvation, the freedom from all the yoke and the cords of sin that tied us. And he says, if we ask him, he'll forgive, he'll set us free, he'll give us a salvation. It's bowed and eyes closed. You're asking that all your guilt, all your condemnation, all the struggling was seen, that the Lord will forgive you right now. Remember, Jesus died for you. He shed his blood so that 
through that name of Jesus, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved or be forgiven. And there you are. If you want that forgiveness now, you want that salvation now, you want that peace of mind now, you want eternal life, the very life of God in man. You want that eternal life now, wherever you are, just raise up your hand and say, yes, Lord, I am here. Yes, Lord, I am here. I want eternal life. I want forgiveness. I want your salvation. I want you to take away all my guilt, all my condemnation. Where are you? To the right, to the left, in front, anywhere you are, and online you're hearing. You're hearing the sound of my voice. Now you can call on the Lord and he will save you and he will forgive you and he'll give you the joy and the peace that comes for salvation where are you where are you the lord is waiting for you if you're raising up your hand please stand up anywhere you are you're raising up your hand please stand up and say yes lord i am here with your hand raised thank you there god bless you over the radio you raise up your hand you stand up on the television you are there you're watching by television you raise up your hand and you stand up any country in any congregation where you are any city any town salvation has come for you now forgiveness has come for you now just raise up your hand and stand up there and call on the name of the of the lord while you are standing there just say lord i thank you i've heard the message of life i've heard the message of your love and the message of your forgiveness lord i come to you please forgive me i believe tell god that i believe tell him i believe that jesus died for me so that all my sins will be forgiven and taken away you are a god that will not lie a God that will not fail. I believe you have heard me without feeling, without any other thing, wanting to see anything. I believe your word, since you cannot lie, I believe that that salvation is mine now. I receive. Lord, I receive. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing, I'll pray for you, Father. All these have raised up their hands, asking for your forgiveness, asking for your salvation. I ask, O oh Lord, according to your promise, forgive them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you give them the joy of salvation and you grant them the faith that believes that as they have come, you will not cast them away. Lord, perform that which you have promised. Thank you, Lord. They are forgiven. Thank you, Lord. They are saved. Thank you, Lord. Now they have eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ, their Savior. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please keep on standing. Uh, counselors are there. They will interact with you. And they will give you slips to feel. Feel them correctly. And then uh, come for the second part of the prayer. We call on our officiating uh, overseer uh, to please uh, come and lead us in this counseling session. Counselors, counselors, please. Take all the dentistry details. Make sure you have all the information captured. Make sure that the phone numbers are correctly written. Converse, you are very important personality, that's why uh, our counselors are there to help you. Our father would like to communicate with you. That's why we are taking these details. Give the correct name. 
Correct phone number. All your details, please. But if you're watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message, there's a link right now displayed on your screen. And for those of you listening through the radio, you can send on WhatsApp your name, your phone number, and your location address, please. Send all this information via SMS. Send all this information by SMS to this number. Plus 234-915-444-9263. I will take the number again. Plus 234-915-444. 444-9263. Now I have good news for you. There'll be a special meeting. We call it Lunch Hour with Jesus. For those who have given their lives to Christ, it's happening tomorrow live by 3 p.m at this school set ground, uh, by this classroom, by my, by my right here. Make sure you are there. It's very, very important. There will also be special online banquet. This is for all of you watching online who gave your lives to Christ. This will happen on the 4th of December, 2022. More details about this will be sent to you. The convener of GCK, Pastor, w, the, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, will be delighted in having you joining this great event. Yola Banquet, that is a uh, some of us in Yola here, Believers Banquet. That will happen on the 4th of December, on Sunday. At Dipala head, uh, headquarters, Dipala Bible Church headquarters, Old Jerry. At Popular Street. The time is also 3 p.m. If you have just received Christ, you are now a VIP. Now, counselors, let me know if you are true by my right, by my left, everywhere, because there will be a miracle tonight. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Get ready for miracle. Wherever you are, online, physically here, Get ready. Today is going to be an explosion of miracle. Like you have never seen before. It's the power that never fails. I challenge you. If you have somebody outside far away, and the person is sick, please connect with the person where you are now. And when prayers are done tonight, there will be testimonies. You will testify. Start preparing yourself. Start praying. Trust in God. Lift that problem to God. At the final amen, you will catch your miracle. Remember, the man of God said, one by one. And your own is tonight. Counselors, let's know what is going on. Counselors, by my left, towards the extreme back, many, many people are sitting down. 
I don't know why they are avoiding to come to the front. Go to the back where many, many of them are sitting down. Councillors, please. Take all the details. I'm be praying. Some of us be praying now and expect a miracle. Don't go yet because the time for a miracle is at hand. Councillors, take the necessary details. Far to the back, where people are sitting, very far to the back. In the language class, please check up, take all the details. If you are through to, the, to, the, to my left, please. Can I see a sign that you are through? Okay. In front of me here, in the hall. If you are through, can I see the sign, please? Councillors, do it quickly. Am I right? If you are true, can I see your hand, please? Can I see you wave the, the flag? You may sign if you are true. To the far back, councillors, spread yourselves properly. Supervisors, let me know if you are true. Some of you sitting at the far back, you want to come to the front. Councillors, to the right, are you true? If you are true, please, can I see any sign? Let's do it quickly. At the far back, if you are true, please, can I see? Okay. Okay, to my left now. At the, far, uh, at the extreme end there, if you are true, let us know. Take all the details. All right, I can see the flag. Thank you. All right, I can see the flag. Thank you. To my right. Now the time has come. Shall we rise up as our Father in the Lord comes up now? Get ready to catch your miracle.
One by one. Say one by one. I said shout one by one. Welcome, Daddy. Amen. Miracle coming your way. You'll catch it. What are you? You raise up one hand, and then the other hand you lay where you have the problem. And then we'll pray. Remember how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. He'll get to you there. Amen. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And then after the prayer, after the final amen, check up yourself. That sickness, disease will not be there anymore. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Heaven is ready for you. Yeah. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the problem. Blind eyes will open. Deaf ears will hear. Yeah. Those who are paralyzed will rise up and walk. One leg shorter than the other, it will grow out. With that hand will become strong, tumor. Fibroid will be removed. Problems will be solved in your life tonight. Yeah. Up your hand. You lay the other hand where you have the problem. When you hear the final amen, it's done. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. The loving God, mighty God, wonder-walking God. Lord, your people are expecting from you. And I'm asking, touch everyone, heal everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, any problem, any challenge, any pain, any sickness, any disease, I command, come out in Jesus' name. That insanity, evil spirit, to mention the mind, to mention the head, I command that evil spirit come out now in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, I command you now, be opened and begin to see in Jesus' name. Deaf ears, dumb tongues, I pray the hand of the Lord will touch you right now. Deaf ears be opened and begin to hear in Jesus' name. Don't turn, be loose and speak out well in Jesus' name. The goiter, the fibroid, the ania, the elephantiasis, whatever is swollen your body, that boil, be healed in Jesus' name. Those have been piled or issue of blood. I pray the Lord touch you right now. Amen. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Arthritis in your joints, shoulder, elbow, knees, waist. Lord, I pray you touch them right now. Amen. Heal them. Heal them. Amen. Touch them and bring total healing in their bodies in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have stroke. I pray the power of God will touch your life right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are lame, paralyzed on the wheelchair, or lying on the ground. I pray the power of God will touch you now. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, those who have evil spirit, evil personalities, don't mention them. I command those personalities get out of their bodies in Jesus' name. Everywhere now, miracle. Everywhere, healing. Everywhere, deliverance. Everywhere, wonders of Christ, wonders of the Lord upon everyone. Right, left, center outside far away there online everywhere we're connected now miracle in your life yeah. healing in your life yeah. deliverance in your life yeah. lord a performance now yeah. a confirmation now 
that as we say this final amen it will be done in jesus name we pray it is done i said it is done check up yourself your miracle is right there